Hello, welcome to this lesson in Mastering Statistics. Here we're going to talk about the concept of the confidence interval. Uh, it dovetails in with what we have talked about before when we were talking about the central limit theorem. You'll see how that dovetailing, how that connection happens here in a little bit. But first I want to explain what a confidence interval is. We'll have to do some definitions so that you understand what we're talking about. And then over the next several lessons we'll develop the ideas of the confidence interval and you'll start to see why it's so important. Uh, what we have said since the very beginning of the mastering statistics sequence is that the purpose of statistics in most cases is really that you would like to learn something about a large population but you don't have the means to go actually talk to everybody in the population. Um, if you could do that then you'd know everything but you don't uh, usually have time or money to do that. So what you usually do is you go take a sample which we were talking about somewhat before but usually you want to go take a sample and from that sample you would like to see if that sample is somehow representative of the population. For instance, if I go take a sample of 100 people and calculate their IQs, if I go give them a test, then I would like to see, okay, is this representative of the population? Um, if it's not, then what range of values of the IQ would, would work for the population, given that I've taken a sample and I've gotten you know, the IQ scores that I've gotten there? So a lot of times what you're trying to do is you're taking a small sample and you're studying it, and you're trying to blow that up and figure out um, some information and study uh, and, and some valid results for the population that you're studying. Um, so in this case, what we're trying to do, just to simplify it and, and make it a little more concrete, let's talk about uh, the mean, for instance, because the mean is something, very, very uh, common thing that you study. For instance, if we're gonna talk about IQs, maybe we have a city or a state or a nation uh, and we would like to know what, their, what the average IQ of that population is. Now, clearly we cannot give everybody an IQ test in the whole population of the country. But what we could do is we could go take a sample of 100 people or 200 people. We could give them an IQ test. Now, from that we would get scores, and we could calculate a sample mean. We could calculate the sample mean of the, of the, of the people that we took the test. And that sample mean probably is pretty close to the population mean of the, of the IQ of the whole population, probably. But clearly it depends on the number of samples. I mean, if I go take five people randomly off the street and give them an IQ test and get an average, am I gonna claim that that's representative of the whole country? No, it's only five people. What if I do something absurd and just give one person an IQ test and say, well, his score is the, is the average IQ of the United States of America? Clearly that's, that's just not gonna work. But if I give a test to maybe 3,000 people, or a test to 10,000 people, then I might feel a lot more confident about my results. Clearly somewhere in the middle, there exists you know, a number of samples that will, that will give me a good